This circuit is a tricky little electrical engineering brain teaser. The task is to find the expected voltage across the diode D1. The way of solving a problem like this that I'll show here is accurate to within less than 1% and aligns with reality pretty well. Solving this kind of problem would be fairly easy if the circuit would look like this. In that case, we could simply take the forward current versus forward voltage characteristics from the datasheet, draw a load line according to our resistor R1, and get the expected operating point. Luckily, there's an engineering magic trick that allows us to convert this circuit into an equivalent circuit like this. This magic trick is called Thevenin's theorem, which states that any linear electrical network that only contains voltage sources, current sources, and resistances can be replaced by a single voltage source and a series resistance. After removing the diode as a nonlinear element from the schematic, we are left with a part of the circuit that we can easily construct a Thevenin equivalent voltage source for. The first thing we have to determine to construct an equivalent voltage source is the voltage across terminals A and B. Working backwards, the voltage drop on R3 is equal to standard Ohm's law, V equals R times I. Since I is zero in this case, this is the definition of an open circuit, the voltage at point A is equal to the voltage at this point C. The voltage at point C with respect to B is of course the voltage over R2. The voltage over R2 of course follows the standard rules for voltage dividers, which in this case is the source voltage of 4 volts times R2 divided by the sum of R1 and R2. Since they are both 100 ohms, experts can immediately see that the voltage across R2 is going to be half of that of the source voltage, so 2 volts is our solution. Since the voltage at point A is equal to the voltage at point C, which is 2 volts, the voltage at point A with respect to B is also going to be 2 volts. The open circuit voltage is one of two puzzle pieces needed to constructing an equivalent voltage source. The second puzzle piece is the internal resistance depicted by the resistor R1. The resistance needs to be chosen in a way that both voltage sources behave exactly identical to each other under load conditions. For Thevenin equivalent voltage sources, the rule is to short out all voltage sources and open up all current sources. Since our circuit only has one voltage source, this is going to be quite simple. With the voltage source shorted out, the resistance between the terminals A and B is determined. Since R1 and R2 are in parallel and of equal value, we can quite easily determine that their equivalent resistance is going to be 50 ohms. Since the resistor R3 is obviously in series with the just calculated equivalent resistance, we can determine that the resistance value seen across points A and B is 200 ohms. Having determined the source voltage and the internal resistance, we now have all the parameters needed to construct our equivalent voltage source. This voltage source behaves exactly the same as the version with the 4 volt source voltage and the three resistors. Therefore, the equivalent voltage source can now be used to determine the voltage across diode D1. The diode chosen in this circuit is a yellow LED by the manufacturer Lucky Light. At a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, the manufacturer specifies a few data points for standard operating conditions. All of these parameters, and yes, all, including the color, do change with temperature. That is why you can turn a yellow LED into a green one if you put it into liquid nitrogen at about minus 200 degrees Celsius. But back to the problem at hand, the manufacturer specifies a forward voltage of 2 to 2.4 volts at a forward current of 200 milliamps. Looking at our equivalent voltage source, this doesn't help us at all in determining the voltage across the diode D1. Assuming that any current larger than zero is flowing through the diode, the voltage has to be less than 2 volts. So what is it? Page 4 of the datasheet also shows the forward current versus forward voltage characteristic of the diode. The operating point of our circuit is going to be the intersection 
of the load line from our equivalent voltage source and the diode's IV characteristic from the datasheet. The load line is constructed from the open circuit voltage, which is 2 volts as we already previously determined, and the short circuit current of our equivalent voltage source. Using Ohm's law, we can determine the short circuit current between terminals A and B to be 10 milliamps. Therefore, the second point for constructing the load line is 10 milliamps and 0 volts. Bruh. Unfortunately, the graph doesn't extend that far, but that is nothing that's going to stop a determined engineer. So after some geometry, gymnastics and exponential interpolation of the IV curve, the operating point was determined to be 1.825 volts. Before we go ahead and do an in-circuit verification of this prediction, let me mention that 1.825 volts is also the correct answer for the quiz that I posted previously to this video, the winners are shown right here. Congratulations and thank you for participating. Trust but verify as they say. So I built up the circuit, applied 4 volts and measured the voltage across the LED that obviously is glowing though fairly dimly. And what do we get? 1.828 volts, almost exactly what we predicted.